Okay, so today, second day of Grimfest, um, and today we've got some awesome films on. Uh, we're about to screen a brand new movie. It's the UK premiere of a movie called Trench Eleven. And uh, I have here with me uh, Charlie Carrick, who plays Dr. Priest in the movie. So it's really great to have you along. Could you tell us a little bit about your character in the film and a little bit about the film in general? Yeah, so, so the film's kind of a first world, first world war movie. It's about a battalion of soldiers, mixed uh, Canadian, American and British, who go underground down like multiple layers underneath the trench because they've heard that there's a, a German soldier who's developing chemical weapons down there. So they go down there, they know that the Germans have tried to destroy the base where they was doing this stuff and that they failed to do that. So they go down there on the off chance that there's still something down there. Yeah. It's a very claustrophobic uh, movie. It is. I've seen yeah. it and it's really, really good. I, li yeah, I like it a lot. Um, I, I presume a lot of it was done in the studio. I presume there were a lot of sets built for this, for all the underground bunker scenes. Is that, is that right? Well, so we shot the movie in Winnipeg, in uh, Manitoba, in Canada, which uh, in the middle of winter, a very, very, very cold experience. Right. But we actually started out, I mean, most of the movie, as you know, takes place in those tunnels and yes. in these bunkers. But we, we shot all the outside stuff first. So it looks beautiful, by the way, all the stuff on the, on the kind of front line. Yeah, yeah it's very Minus 30 beautiful. conditions really? paid off in the end. Oh, yeah. my God. Right. Yeah. And then yeah, they, it's very snowy. Yeah, very it's snowy. Though. Yeah, yeah, I think but it really suffered. adds to it, too. <laughs> Um, and then uh, they didn't have a studio, There's, I don't think there is a professional film studio in Winnipeg. Oh, right. But they had, we had like this sort of abandoned factory that had been converted into a studio. And you built the sets in there? They had built all the sets in there. Yeah. So yeah, it was, uh, it, it was really cool to look at. It was very immersive being in those sets. It was very, more so than I think if we had done it in a more professional studio. There yeah. was something a bit creepy and cold and dirty about the, the studio, the, so the work. can I ask you, Two quick questions. One about the other members of the cast. It's a great cast. Um, could you tell me a little bit about what it was like to work with the other actors and also with the director Leo? Leo, Sh Leo Sherman is the director. Yeah, is it yeah. is it his first feature or has he made other features? No, I think it's this? a second or his third. Okay. I think it's a second or his third. But I think, and he'll probably correct me on this. This is the first one that he's written. He has right. a writing partner called Matt, um, and they wrote this together. I know this was really close to their hearts. Mm. This they've been working on it for a long time uh, with the producer Tyler Levine. Um, and yeah, I think they assembled a really good cast and I think that's kind of what, you know, I've never done a horror movie before or like a genre movie and I'm always a bit wary of them. I, do, I, I don't know why, I just think I, and this is a preconceived notion that's probably wrong, is that the character stuff gets put to the back in them. And I don't think that's the case in this movie or in any good horror movie. Absolutely. I think this is a very character-based movie, which yeah. really, I think you would identify with the characters in it and the situation they're in, it, which I think is vital for any movie, whether it's a horror film or, or any other genre. Yeah. Um, but also, I, 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 uh, there's some, some really gruesome and really clever special effects in this movie. Mm -hmm. And I think by the looks of it, a lot of them were done physically rather than kind of CGI. Yeah. I, I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't want to give too much away, but this kind of weird... Oh, I don't know how to describe it, like kind of almost like worms and stuff in this thing. And yeah. they're really freaky. And these, yeah. these people, stuff coming out of their bodies. It's quite a body horror kind of movie. It reminded me of some of the stuff in like early, early Cronenberg movies with this kind of body horror yeah. element to it. Was that kind of, how was that to work with? Well, David Cronenberg's a big influence on Leo. Uh, and in fact, Leo kind of sort of studied under David Cronenberg oh, really? for a long time. They were kind of, I don't know if they were family friends or something, but I know that oh, they're, they're that quite close sense. to each other and uh, his films were a big influence on Leo. But yeah, a lot of that stuff was practical effects. We had this guy, I wish I could remember his name, a French-Canadian guy who, once they had decided they wanted to do this all practical effects, basically everybody said, there's this one guy who's got to do it for you. Right. There's only this one guy, and they said, well, he's kind of out of our range price-wise, but they got this guy to do it. Um, he does all the effects for the TV show Hannibal, Oh, right. Which Fantastic. is also a lot of body horror yeah, stuff. Yeah. So I'll just say that there's this, as the doctor, I have to do an autopsy yes. in the scene, and that was all done with practical effects. Yes, and it's really quite gruesome. Yes, yeah. it was gruesome. Was it weird to do? Yeah. I mean, was it quite horrific being there? or? Yeah, and of course, when you're using these great effects, but in a kind of low-budget movie, there's no practice. So I was like, can I maybe get a practice of soaring <laughs> yeah. through that or pulling that thing out? 
And they were like, no. You've got to do it. We've got to do it on the You've got to do it right every first time. Yeah. There's so no second takes on some of that stuff. Situation. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Well, listen, the movie's fantastic. And so thank, thank you very awesome. much for joining oh, us. My pleasure. Uh, I wish it all the success after it's done its festival round. I hope it's going to get a release here in the UK. Do you, yeah. do you know if it's when it's set for No, I don't know. But I think they were very happy to. The movie premiered in Germany as part of, uh, yes. what's that, F Fantasy, Fantasy Fest? Fantasy Fest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they were happy about that because, you know, obviously the German element is big yeah, in this movie. Yeah, of course, and yeah. Robert Stadlober, who plays kind of our bad guy, he's a well-known act, Austrian actor. Yes. And I think that they think that the European part of it's important and they're happy that it was embraced over there. I think what's interesting about it is there's been quite a lot of uh, genre films um, over the last few years that have been Second World War kind of Nazi zombie kinds of films yeah. and things like that. There's been quite a few of those. I think what's interesting about this is that it's set, it's set in World War One trenches, mm -hmm. which is something that hasn't really been done much before. I haven't yeah. seen, there's only been, you know, that I can remember maybe one mo one kind of genre film that was set in the trenches. So it's quite, a, a, quite unusual. And the thing I like about it too is that the war is over at this point. It's like the yes. final days of the war. And what we're really talking about is like the legacy of the way yes. that people behave during the war, how that's going to carry on. And, and one of the things I liked about my character is he's the guy who kind of is thinking about things after the war. He's not in the, he's not right in it like a lot of the other characters are. He's thinking about how we've we got to all get our humanity back somehow and let's try to do that. Yeah, excellent. Well, listen, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, oh, thank you.